In this video we'll explore the single degree of freedom problem with damping. Start off by drawing a support and the mass. Uh, we'll call this mass M. Assume that it's attached with a linear spring. Spring has stiffness K and also a linear damper. Damping constant C. And we'll this is fixed. We'll assume our x coordinate is positive downwards, like that. So the next thing we need to do is draw the free body diagram, whereby we cut the, the uh, mass away from its supports and replace those with forces. That's our mass. Here we would have F sub S, the spring force, and a damper force, which we'll call F sub C. And we note that the spring force F sub S is equal to minus K times X. That is, it opposes the displacement. It's a restorative force. And the damping force, similarly, F C, opposes the motion. Minus C times X dot. All right, so we start off by writing Newton's second law. That out. Newton's second law. That says MA or MX double dot in this context is equal to the spring force plus the damping force. Substituting minus KX minus CX dot, and we choose to rewrite it as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero. This is our equation of motion that we need to solve. It's a second order differential equation and thus requires two initial conditions. The initial conditions in this case are very simply the displacement x at time equals zero is equal to some constant x zero and we'll assume the velocity x dot at zero is equal to some known constant b zero. So we proceed like before where x is assumed to be of the form c, we'll use c bar to keep it different from this c, it's a different constant. Uh, e to the RT, which implies that X derivative is equal to R C bar E to the RT, and the second derivative, X double dot, is equal to R squared C bar E to the RT. Substituting this into equation 1 gives us our characteristic equation. Stick equation. Um, let's write it like this m r squared c bar e to the r t plus c r c bar e to the r t plus k c e to the r t is equal to zero. Now for non-trivial solutions, C bar is non-zero, so that must cancel. Uh, e to the RT is never zero, so that must cancel. And you're left with the characteristic equation that says M R squared plus C R plus K equals zero. Let me just move this up. Alright, and the solution to the characteristic equation, the roots of, uh, it's just a second order polynomial, the roots are given by R1 and 2 equals minus C plus or minus the square root of C squared minus 4MK 
okay, all divided by 2m. Now you might remember from differential calculus, differential equations, that we need to consider three different cases based on what this quantity inside the square root bracket, the square root sign looks like. Three possibilities. Either it's greater than zero, or it's equal to zero, or it's less than zero. Let's look at the critical case, and that's when it's equal to zero. Okay, so we're assuming that c squared minus 4mk equals zero, and we'll call this the critical case. Critical case. Very simply, this reduces to c equals the square root, two times the square root of mk. And we'll call that c critical. We'll also take the time to note that c critical can also be written as taking the m out, 2m square root of k over m. But we know from before that omega n squared equals k over m. So therefore c critical is equal to 2m omega n. This will come in very handy in a second. Okay, so the solution proceeds as before, where as the damping reduces to zero, you get an underdamped case, and this becomes the square root of a negative number, and it leads to oscillations. Well, in the math, it leads to sine and cosine, and the physical description of that is an oscillatory motion. If C, if the damping is sufficiently high, then what happens is it really retards all motion and you don't get oscillations. Uh, in fact, as C goes to infinity, one of these roots goes to zero and you find that there's no motion at all. Motion ceases up. And then finally, obviously, if, uh, if it's equal to zero, you get the case of critical damping. And critical damping is defined as the damping that brings the system back to rest most quickly. If you are trying to uh, reduce vibrations as quickly as possible in a system, then critical damping is what you want. Okay, before we go through the solution, what I'm going to do is choose to rewrite this in what I would call non-dimensional terms. Um, engineers like to use certain parameters so that when they're solving problems, and instead of solving just one problem at a time, they're solving entire families of problems. Um, and this becomes significant because some of these codes run for a couple of days on computer and uh, you want to run it as little as you have to. Anyway, so we go back to our original equation, um, which said that mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equals zero, and this was the equation of motion. And we define a parameter that we're going to call zeta. And zeta is very simply the ratio of damping to your critical damping. If zeta is equal to 1, then you're at critical damping. If zeta is equal to 0, then you've got no damping. If it's less than 1, you've got underdamped situation. If it's greater than 1, you've got an overdamped situation. So the damping ratio also means that C can be rewritten as the damping ratio times C critical, and we know C critical here. All right, so if I take the equation of motion and divide both sides by M, I end up with X double dot plus C over M, X dot plus K over M, X equals zero. But we know what c over m is, right? Because we know from here, let me write this out. Let me write it in a different color. If I follow this through, c is equal to zeta times c critical, which is 2m omega n. 2m omega n. 
as I'm running out of space here. That means that C of M is equal to just rewriting this 2 zeta omega M. So I can rewrite my equation of motion in this, in this form as x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n plus omega n squared equals 0. When I then assume that x is of the form c, making this here, c bar e to the rt, plug it in. I'm going to end up with a characteristic equation that looks like r squared plus 2 zeta omega n r plus omega n squared equals 0. And my roots are 1 and 2 equals minus 2 zeta omega n all over 2 plus or minus square root we'll do that sorry square root of b squared so that would be 4 zeta squared omega n squared minus 4 times 1 times omega n squared all divided by 2. All right, let's make a little more space. Put that on there. Simplifying this is equal to minus zeta omega n plus or minus the fours all cancel here. I end up with the square root of zeta minus 1 times omega n squared. We give this quantity a name. I made a mistake here, excuse me. Say the squared minus 1. We call this omega d, or the damped frequency of vibration. As zeta goes to 0, the frequency of vibration, vibration goes to omega n can see that here. So we can rewrite this once, once again as minus zeta omega n plus or minus omega d. R1, two. Which finally means that x is equal to a1 uh, e to the minus zeta omega n times, in fact, I want to take this constant out. Let me just erase that quickly. That's not how I want to do it. So this is just equal to e to the minus zeta omega n t multiplied by, we use the constant a1 here, cosine omega dt plus a2 sine omega dt. And again, this is subject to the initial conditions that x of 0 is equal to x0 and b of 0. Well, let's just write that as x dot rather. x dot of 0 equals b0. All right, and that's where we're going to leave it for now and leave it as an exercise to you to go and do the substitutions here to determine the constants. And by inspection, you should be able to see that A1 is equal to X0, and then you can plug that in and solve for, for A2 very easily. Well, see you in the next video. Thank you.